as we begin uh, this particular new year and we greet our friends who are listening to us via uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, via email when we send um, out this um, audio clip to our good friends. We say hi to you. You're listening to Making a Difference here in the studio of WSDA here in the beautiful Virgin Islands. And so I'm Pastor Oral Hazel and also we have Minister Barrett Hazel, my brother. Today we're going to talk about fasting and uh, one preacher said that uh, January is the most holy month of them all because most Christians we begin the year right by fasting and in praying and so I hope that if your church called a time of fasting and praying that you really participate it helps the church it helps the unity in the church it also helps uh, the pastor that people are united in one around the area of prayer and fasting and some people think that they would die if they fast and if they pray but you would not die but you will live so I'm going to give some quick pointers that I'm going to release uh, my brother, Minister uh, uh, Barrett Hayes. He's going to talk to you somewhat and we're going to go back and forth. But in Isaiah 58 and verse 6, it tells us, is not this Isaiah 58, 6. You can write it down because if, you, if this is the first time you're hearing about fasting, it's in the Bible. Isaiah 58 and verse 6 says, is not this the fast that I have chosen? This is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah to loose the bands of wickedness to undo heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. So I believe we're taking this verse and we want to do something with this verse in the Virgin Islands. We want to say we can have a prayer and a fasting chain going on St. Croix, on St. John and also on the, the word St. Thomas. So if you're a pastor listening and you want to be a, participate with this, you could call us at uh, 340-774-5400 that's uh, 340-774-5400. What we want to happen um, during this year, we really want to take the bull by the horn and we want to, uh, God gave us this idea and the idea just flew through us and so we're going to run with it. And so we want um, every day of the week that we have someone fasting and praying, our persons fasting and praying for these Virgin Islands. We want to keep them beautiful. We want to preserve them. We want to keep the crime down. We want it to go down. Last year we had about uh, a, a, a big number, but I'm not going to call it since I'm streaming to the world. We'll keep our business to ourselves. And so what happened is that we need to keep our statistic of crime down here in the Virgin Islands. And so therefore, the, the God idea, the God thought that we had was that we got to really fast and we got to pray. Because according to Isaiah 58 and verse 6, Remember the elders before us, the other prayer giants in St. Thomas that we knew. I, I know some of them. I know Mother Penn. I know Mother Blyden. I know uh, Pastor Blyden. Some of the old ones. Okay? Um, who were the intercessors in St. Thomas? They taught us how to intercede there. I, I'm a product of the Apostolic Faith Church by the cemetery. And they taught us, Mother Penn taught us um, every afternoon how to pray. She was a senior person, but she brought the young people in the house of God and taught us how to pray. And so we are, I'm a product of it. My brother is a product of it. And, you know, just a Judy Turnbull who sings around St. Thomas, she is a product of it. And I could go on and call many names of persons who are still in the gospel up today. So Isaiah 58 and verse 6, 6 tells us, Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? So we want to use God's chosen fast to break the bands of wickedness over our land and also to undo heavy burdens. This is not done to legislation and gun laws and all kind of different stuff, putting more police out on the road. As Christians, we got to take up our onus and we got to do what we got to do. Okay, we have got to fast and we have got to pray. So based on Isaiah 58 and verse 6, um, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heaven, heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. If we want every yoke to be broken over our island in St. Thomas, we have got to fast, and we have got to pray. And there are many different types of fasting. Yes, there, there is what's called the absolute fast. Uh, we go just on water alone. Uh, you can do the absolute fast for only three days without um, any water but you have to be in a restful state 
and then you state your purpose why you're going to fast what are you fasting for to bring down the crime of rate crime rate in st thomas to stop the the bedlam in our land so we can have a paradise again peaceful again in our community um that we'll have fathers and mothers bringing their sons and daughters back to the house of god that is how it used to be when we came out of slavery we used to ride donkeys and horses and mules to church you now we have cars and the best cars uh, i'm driving to church and have the best of them shine and silvery the sun glinted on them and just pack up by your house it's time for us to drive them to church so based on this what we want to start a prayer revolution in saint thomas a prayer and fasting that every day of the week our folks would sign up and we would publish it on our website and uh, folks will have the information in their hand and folks, I will tell them, we don't have to meet but via the web, how to go about it, via telephone, how to go about it, and how to go about fasting and that day, praying on that day, and what we want to accomplish throughout the year. And then we'll see what God will do um, with that God idea he placed within our heart. Because if you want to see something happen, we, got, we, we can't just continue doing the norm, just keep in church, beating tambourine and doing the same old, same old thing, and nothing happening in St. Thomas. So we want to marshal those who say they can pray, those who go to church, any church can participate, uh, yeah, any denominational, one, any, any denominational, or any church group, you fast and pray, you sign your name up, and we're going to fast and pray and cry out for restoration and a refreshing and peace and tranquility in our land, and that we have a heart to, um, to serve God, and a heart that's turning towards God, and we break the bands of wickedness in our land and so i release you now to my dear beloved brother uh, minister barrett hazel and he's going to share with you some thoughts and ideas and i'll come back with you amen yeah i just want to just piggyback from where he just left off and that is isaiah 58 verse 6 says i have no this is the fast that i have chosen and that is god is saying I choose this fast. And his first thing that he did fast is he said, I have chosen to lose to I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness. And I I believe that this is what th this time of fasting is, is about to do is that people who has been tied up with wickedness, wrapped up with wickedness, that they are going to see those bands. There's a lot of people every year, the they, they, they bands are broken. This year, this is not only going to be just bands broken, but we are going to go through to the total fast that is chosen. And it is said, the bands are broken. The Lord is, let, is, is, is taken off. The oppressed is set free. This is the one that is going to happen powerfully this year. And he shall break every yoke. We are, about, we are about to see those yokes, those things that has, has had you bound and made you not be able to do what God has called you to do. You're going to see it render helpless. That means no more will those yokes keep you, um, keep riding you, riding you, or keep you doing the things that you're doing. But you're going to see a move of God that has is begun in your life that is going to break those yokes. That means those yokes that is not going to be able to be put back together again not just the bands not just setting you free but i see in these times that this is the time that you're going to see those yokes being broken and a little further down he said and i will remove the yoke from in the midst of thee now not only will they be broken but we're about to see them not even recognize in your presence not even mention in your presence because these yokes are about to be removed from in the midst of thee this is your year for freshness and i hear god saying strongly remember not the former things neither the things of all behold i do a new thing a new thing and this is is god's time to for you and and your time to let God do that new thing in you. Wonderful. And the next scripture we're going to look at is uh, Matthew 6, 17 and 18. So we are just giving you some thoughts about prayer and fasting to break every yoke in your life, break every curse in your life, break um, family curses 
Everybody up in the house, um, I'm, I'm sick. Everybody up in the house, poor, disgusted, and sorry. Always confusion. There's always a son, an aunt, an uncle in prison. That's that's a curse. Someone in that family has to give their life to Christ so that they have the power to fast and they have the power to pray so that they can come in agreement with God in faith to break this curse off of this family. Because God did not put you on in the earth to live um, in um, degradation and also to live in the dumps. He wants you, he came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. You, you, I'm telling you about it, but you got to try it for yourself. So in Matthew 6, 17 and 18 tells us, when you fast, he says, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but, but to your father who is in secret place and your father who sees in secret, he will reward you openly. So therefore, in fasting, it, it is somewhat hard on your body. I mean, you, you feel like your, your head is in fog, you feel thirsty, at times you feel weak. You understand me? Your body would um, sometimes do things you know, you know normally do because you're fasting with a purpose and intent and you just want to be obedient to God and this is just saying when you fast so God he said when you fast so here is Jesus saying when you fast so therefore he expect you to fast so when you fast anoint your head with and your with with anoint your head and wash your face you see so that's what we do and he says to expect the reward from the father when you pray and it says and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly so when you fast there is a reward for those who fast you have anything to say on that one amen yes um just just before he said when you fast he said when you pray mm -hmm. and many times we don't certain things now we don't want to do we said this is not for today mm -hmm. so if we accept that when you pray then let's go and say when you fast. Mm -hmm. There are some times that Jesus, when he his disciples said, "Why couldn't we cast this one out?" That means there were some that they were that they were praying for and things were working. Yeah, they they, they had just come back rejoicing a few few days before that, saying, "Hey, the demons were subject to us." Mm -hmm. But now there was a kind, and this is what I wanted to to, to let you know. There's some things that is happening in your city. There are things that is happening in your country. There are things that are happening in the earth that it's going that that kind is going to take more than just our morning prayer. It's going to take more than just our two songs and three and three fast ones. It's going to take consecration because when my people that are called by my name shall humble not themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven i'll forgive their sins and i will heal their land i believe that this is the time for us as people of god people who god has called for such a time as this to recognize that it's time to show up it's time to do the purpose of god in our generation before we go to sleep or go in the rapture this is your time wonderful and so what is fasting Okay, what is fasting? The practice of abstaining from food. The practice of abstaining from food, either completely or partially, for a specified period. So you decide the period, and then you you declare the fast. Okay, when when are you going to fast? You, you declare, I'm going to fast during this particular time, a specific time. And we have the absolute fast, just on the water alone. You have to be in a restful state. Or you can do a partial fast with water, juices, and fruits, and a little soup, um, vegetable soup. Uh, some people like to eat greens during that time also. But um, if you're doing strenuous labor, you can fast from 12 to about 12, and then you could um, drink water, drink juice, and drink some soup, and continue up until the evening, until you're out of work. And then you, you must pray more also when you're fasting, and be in a state of fasting and coupled with prayer. And always have the purpose that you're praying and fasting about before your eyes okay so fasting and praying okay so you have that we have the Daniel kind of fast where he ate pulse 
and you have the absolute fast okay uh, some people talk about fasting television and fasting that and but the real fast is the fasting of food now in the area where if you're a little older in age and you can't consult your physician if he says you cannot fast well you just don't fast maybe you might just want to be much more lighter on the food intake um, drink some herbal tea in the morning and then see if you could go up until 10 you fast until 12 in the evening until maybe about 10 9 read your bible pray pray for your pastor pray for the island pray for our governor pray for the senators pray for our legislators the commissioners pray for our the, the policemen and women on the street pray over pray for the school teachers pray everything touch everything that you can, as far as you can go the more time you have the more people you could call the more entities you can put in pray the news um, pray up in Obama's White House, pray in our White House, pray in St. Croix, Cruz Bay, Frederick State, Carrot Bay, Coral Bay, pray over in the British Virgin Islands. We pray and we pray and we pray until we see change. And so the, the forefathers who gave us, the mothers and the dads who prayed in our churches by themselves, who took off time when they retired and uh, to fast and pray. We see that these days that the enemy is putting so much pressure upon us. We have so much, so many bills that even though we are retired, we still have to do another one and two and three jobs. We can even find a time to enjoy retirement and to really give some time to God in fasting and in prayer. Uh, but we want to change that uh, as we, as a generation must arise to, to pray so we can change certain paradigms that want to come down to the pipe to stop a freshness, revelation, impartation to come into our land. So I'm going to list some things. I'm going to let um, Minister Barrett Hazel jump in. He's here with me in the studio. And you're listening to Making a Difference. Um, Oral Hazel and also we have Minister Barrett Hazel with me. He just came in via a jet. He's fresh with revelation and anointing from Merrimar Christian Center out of Florida. But we're talking about prayer and fasting and as we call January the most holy month of them all for the Christians because this is a time when most of the Christians all over the world globally we fast and we pray and we encourage others to fast and pray because when there's a unified um, fusion in fasting and prayer then we're going to have a catalyst of signs wonders and miracles we're going to have family members saved we're going to have family members healed and hold okay and and that's what we're going to do all right and I, I just sense impressed us to pray for someone i think that you're in your home uh you have all like a like a blue dress um a blue dress i'm going to say a blue dress blue shirt but we're going to pray for you all right and so we're going to pray that god would heal you right now all right so touch put your hand on your radio if you could hover to it and let somebody bring the radio to you and right now we're going to release the healing virtue of God into your life. So Father, right now, because you're the God of revelation, you know this person in this blue dress or blue shirt. And so Father, right now, you shed your precious life blood for that, the cleansing of that person's body. You also took the stripes upon your back. The, your, your back was broken for that person. So Father, right now, you release your nail scarred hand that was pierced and touch that person now from the corner of their head to the sole of their feet. We drive out sickness, disease and infirmity in the name of Jesus because sickness is a limited death. And so Father, and they, they would not die. We decree and we declare that they will not die but live to see their grandchildren and they're going to dance again and they're going to live again in jesus name amen. Amen. release that strength amen. and that power in your life now in jesus Hallelujah. name amen amen so amen. good so with that we call us a little interruption god just cared about somebody in blue Hallelujah. so now in as we pray we believe and you receive by faith now fasting allows us to come before god in humility and repentance fasting allows us to come before god in humility and repentance and so as a christian we don't pontificate. Fasting keeps you humble. It doesn't matter what you have done, what you have ac accomplished. When you fast and pray, because you recognize actually <clears throat> you are just the boss boy and, and God is the one who is doing everything. So we always turn and give great glory to God. Fasting helps us to focus on God and to become sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So people say, I can't hear the Holy Spirit. I can't hear God. Fast and pray. 
fasting empowers us through God for service. Mm -hmm. You want to jump in there? Go ahead. Amen. Yeah, I, 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 especially on the one, the, mm -hmm. number two. Mm -hmm. Fasting helps us to focus on God mm -hmm. and to become sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I think about Esther. Yes. And when Esther was be, be, before before the fast, yes. she thought that she was she that that maybe luck is what got her into her position mm -hmm. and um, she thought that in that position that she had come into at least she was secured yes but i hear mordecai not only telling her just how to act but now she's he's telling her an important information and mm -hmm. he said what you were brought to the kingdom yes who know it if you were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this mm -hmm. in in short he was saying this is what you were born for yes this is why vashti had to mess up this is why situation had to change because god had you for this time yes don't miss your time of god visitation don't miss the time when that the purpose for which you were born that you miss it yes because you have not focus on god your focus on luck your focus on your kids your focus on everything around and your job take well, some well, time and take some time mm -hmm. and focus on god that's right and when she focused on god she got sensitivity believe it or not there's some things that is just next door to you right by your next to your hand that god want to impart some information on but we are too busy doing everything else and because our focus is not on God, we can't hear our next instruction. If you just spend time with God, our next instruction will be heard. It is not that our next instruction is not given, but we are too busy to hear it. So I want to encourage you, this is the time to spend some time with God so that you can hear clearly, that you can hear beyond just i wonder if that you could say exactly what is needed to say like esther esther said i can't go tell mordecai i can't go to the to the king because it is not i did not get any word to go mm -hmm. i can't show up if i show up i'm a dead woman mm -hmm. but when she fasted and pray the next place you saw her was in the inner court there's some place in the inner court that you need to get to but you have you, you got to be prepared don't just rush and go to the inner court you'll be dead but if you focus on god god gonna tell you the dress to wear how to step mm -hmm. what to do next so that when you reach into the presence of that which is supposed to release favor they have no th no choice than to give you what god what god has commanded them to give you wonderful so it's, it's powerful um fasting helps us to focus on god because at times we have a focus on men uh, our woman we have our focus on our governor we have our focus on the legislators we have our focus on some other entity okay but this is a time when we say i'm not going to look at our governor he has his job to do to govern us to oversee what's happening in the virgin islands the government okay but he cannot do everything that we need to be done he needs i mean it needs management capital it needs money and anything anytime you shout out something to be done it needs money okay and they're saying they don't have any so therefore we have to take our eyes off of our our governor for a while fasting and praying does that to you fasting helps us to focus on god god he is our helper yep. okay what the people are just focusing on different things that just wasting their time and wasting their money when it is a god has these these are god's systems to prosper us these are god's system to help us and to, to restore life in our life so what are you focusing on fasting will help you to shift your focus okay Okay, fasting helps to clear the mind and enables a person to have a keener perception of divine things. Faith comes easier and clearer 
in seasons of fasting with prayer. So if you want, you say, God, I don't have any faith. Lord, help my faith. Well, you do your part and you fast and you pray. And fasting will be a catalyst to increase your faith in the area where you need it most. Amen. Okay. That's, that, that's, that's wonderful. When you think about that's the currency of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The currency of the kingdom is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. When you understand that, that, that when you, you, you live on, I wonder if, when God wants you to draw from the currency of the kingdom and say, I draw faith from you, Father God, because I spent time with you, the, the, the word declared, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger voice will they not follow. How did that happen? You think that he just injected? No. You get to know one's voice by spending time around them. Spending time hearing the voice. So that all of a sudden, you know the voice of a stranger and you know the voice of, of, of the master. I, I believe this is it. This is mm -hmm. the time yes. that we can't only and, and, and we can't only every every January we go into this fasting or oh, we're not eating this, we're not eating that, we're not eating the other. Isaiah tell us what kind of fasting that God is calling us back to. A fast that when you finish fasting, that yoke is not seen or represented in the midst of you. This is the fast that God is calling to you, us back to, that we stop get tied up with yokes, stop get bondage with yokes, and let the faith of God release us, because we um, we are in a, um, a time in our lives when God is looking for us to know that what is going to happen in the earth, the access that God is about to give is going to be voice activated. You ask me, what do you mean by that? I mean, you will have what you say. You will have what you say. And as you begin to declare God's word, you will see doors open, swing open, that look like they were shut. You will see gates lift up, as the, as the scripture declare, lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. This is your time of access. But like Esther, you can't come in unprepared. You'll be a dead man. But once you have made preparation, now you can go in and you're not only going to ask for one moment. You're going to give him chance to think. You're going to give him chance to get a chance to say, to have sleepless night because what? Because now you're hearing God and God who is about to bring things back into there's some debts that are supposed to be paid that is not had not been paid to you. There's some reward that you're supposed to get that had not yet been had not been given to you. When you fast, all of a sudden God is working on the mind of the people who forget what you did. And now all of a sudden they are ready to reward you. But you have got to be begin with preparation. And the preparation that you have got to come back to is when my people that are called by my name, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal their land. St. Thomas need you you have got to decide i am going to enlist in the in the army of the king wonderful and so wherever you are because we are streaming <coughs> your area needs you <coughs> wherever if you're in africa uh wherever you are in any township village community you know, big city small town farm town wherever you are God, he, he wants you to begin to fast and to begin to pray. And I say that brings momentum. That brings a refreshing to an entire country. You see what happened? What we do not know is that before we had all these, the, the crashes of all these stock markets and everything, historically proven that we had people who, and before we had all these mega churches, 
we had it was proven we had people who were fasting and praying i i, I have one of the books here by um this young man um franklin hall okay this this book franklin hall and uh, he was it called it calls the fasting prayer if you want to get read a book about fasting this is the this is the top the number one book on praying and fasting the fasting prayer by, and the bond fire by franklin hall f r a n k l i n hall h a l l and he had seasons i mean months okay of fasting people fasted for like 40 days 20 days 25 days okay uh, people who were young who were old in the 60s they fasted when they fasted um growths and goiters um, fell away from their bodies. People mm -hmm. passed out their sicknesses, disease, and infirmity. When they were in, the, they had what we call fasting crusades throughout the United States of America. People just came there just to fast and to pray, just to lay prostrate before God and to pray. And there were some people who had their head, they were bald headed, had no hair on their head, like me, Pastor Barrett. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got their hair back. It's documented in his book. So you got to get this book and read it. About all the things that came about without any Benny Hinn laying hands upon anybody. They got it through prayer and fasting, or Oral Roberts laying hands upon him, or Pastor Oral Hazel, or Minister Barrett laying hands upon them. They got it through this. This is the book you need to get. The Bond Fire, right, Pastor Barrett? Amen. Yeah. amen. You know about this book. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who knows about fasting know about this book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you read this book, man, I tell you, it get you going. All right? So it's at the Fasting Prayer, the Bond Fire book on fasting and praying by. Franklin Hall, the late Franklin Hall. I mean, these guys were the real deal when it came to fasting and prayer. They saw signs, wonders, miracles, healing. Out, out of this particular fasting and prayer in the 50s and 60s came out Oral Roberts um, University, Oral Roberts Ministry, came out of um, T.L. Osborne Ministry, Catherine Kuhlman, and all those people came out of this particular movement through prayer and fasting. So if we want to start another movement on the earth, all right, we got to start fasting and praying. And it is possible. I tell you, once you get going in fasting and praying, it is easy. All right? It is easy. You pick what type of fasting and praying you want to do. You do it. It's not going to kill you. It's just only going to help you and help those around you, help those in your church, help your pastor, help your governor, your legislators, help us. I'm right now in Nigeria. Listen to this, Ambassador. Um, there are about uh, three mega churches just in Nigeria alone. The, 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 the economy, the tourism, I was reading it the other day, some $600 million came in just in December. Okay, with people coming in to their churches, all right? When they had the, um, the Christmas outreach, people coming from all over the world. Okay, so it's possible. I, I've been to Africa and they said, oh, well, the Africans are praying, but nothing is happening. But let me tell you, things are happening now in Africa, all right? And so David Oedipoch came to uh, America, went to buy his uh, brand new jet with cash, cash money. You understand me? And they said, no, no, they could do down pay. He said, no, I know down payment. I want the money here. Cash. That's out of Nigeria. That's what's happening in Nigeria. David Oedipoch, he has a church that seats some 50,000 people. Any hey, Christian people in St. Thomas? We play with St. Thomas. He's, he has a a church that seats 50,000 people. That's the population of St. Thomas the last time I think I checked. Okay? When we did the census. So we just want to play religion. So we got to get some real bonfire going here and some praying and fasting. And the word that I heard in 2013, Pastor, uh, Pastor Barrett, mm -hmm. is that we got to go further in 2030. God is demanding of us. If you go to a church and sit your laurel down on a chair, God demands of you once you hear my voice, he demands of you, let us go further in 2030. Don't take your sleepy self and just come to church sleepy, leave sleepy, and do nothing for the kingdom of God. Pray for somebody. Invite somebody to the house of God. I mean, act like a Christian. Talk like a Christian. Represent yourself like a Christian if you're a Christian. Okay, so let's stop saying, oh, them Christian and them. No, no, no. 2013, we're going to stand up for righteousness. We're going to be bold like a lion. Speak up for Christ. Pray. Don't be afraid to pray in your lunchroom over your breakfast. Pray and prophesy. Get radical. <laughs> in 2013, there are too many people, too many Christians hiding 
Uh, come on up, Pastor. Oh, he's pulling you out from hiding. Stand up for, for righteousness. Read your Bible. Get to know your Bible so you can talk the word of God. Preach the word of God in season. You see, what will make you bold is when you fast and when you pray. But if you just, just stay on the river. You see, when Ezekiel, tomorrow I want to preach a message, a radical message at church. When Ezekiel is on the banks of the river, so all the global lifers get ready. Tomorrow I'm going to be radical. I tell you, I don't know when we're going to get out of church tomorrow. Because they, they're going to be on point. Because we're praying and fasting for something different to happen in St. Yeah, Thomas. Amen. We're going further. We're going differently. And let me tell you, we, I got a sermon for tomorrow about when, when Ezekiel was on the bank of the river, everything was dry and patched. He was standing up in drought. But when he stepped into the river, I stepped into the river, representative of the anointing and the power of God, yeah. where God started controlling his feet and his mobility. God wants to control the Christian's feet, the church's feet, and its mobility. Uh, yeah. uh, watch out, I might just preach up a storm here, and I don't know where you're going to stop. But he wants to get us uh, yeah. into that element Amen. of the Holy Spirit. And he wants to get our, uh, our knees. Yeah. He wants our knees to get wet. When Elijah was up on Mount, the mountain, Mount Horeb, praying and fasting, he cried out to God seven times. Seven times his knees got wet. When his knees got wet, then that's when the clouds show up. Christians, we need our knees wet. So that signs and wonders begin to show up. Then he got his waist wet. My God, I'm preaching my sermon. Amen. When your waist wet, you become productive. You move from being still burst and you become productive. I feel something happening up here. So I'm going to stop before I preach my sermon. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to run. But let's start faster than praying. That was just to give my people a little. I'm going to come to church tomorrow. That's, that's, a, that's a trailer, man. That's a trailer. <laughs> that's the trailer. I, 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 believe, I believe that Woo! every now and again, you need to make sure that hey, I'm like, that's a trailer for some, tomorrow. There's some Thing for you to come for uh, yes true. but uh, while he was speaking god spoke something to okay. me that i wanted to, uh, to just say and that is to the people that are he said speak to those who are praying and fasting mm -hmm. and reckon you at this time of the year many people do what they call daniel fast mm -hmm. what what we have got to realize is that daniel fast was a fast until the answer come and say it again mm -hmm. daniel fast mm -hmm. but not a 21 day fast it went for 21 days but it was a fast until the answer come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this era of time i want to call you to fast until the answer comes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that means don't settle for just Praying. That's right. It's time for the answer. Yes. It's time to see that which you have prayed for mm -hmm. come forth. My God. Last time I was in St. Thomas, I ministered on, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Yes. And something that I said, <laughs> we got God drop into my spirit was, when Although that God told Elijah, mm -hmm. there will be no rain until you say so. When he say so, there still was no rain. Mm -hmm. There were no cloud in the sky. That's right. Don't what Elijah recognized that should not stop you from still declaring, "I hear the sound yes, hear of an that. abundance of rain." That's right. Don't forecast. Let's start prophesying what God said to us, mm -hmm. so that we that when it come to pass, the earth will know that God is still speaking to His people. That's right. Because God want to show Himself strong mm -hmm. in 2013. Yes. I hear Him saying strongly, "I want to show myself strong in the earth." Yes. I want the earth to see mm -hmm. what happened when people come back to Eden. My God. Because in Adam all die. And we understand that. We talk about Adam all the time. But in Christ. Mm -hmm. In Christ. Yeah. That which died mm -hmm. became alive. Mm -hmm. The glory that was missing came back. And then Jesus was about to write his will just before he was crucified. And he said, the glory that you have given me. You mean what? The glory that you have given me, I have given to them. Mm -hmm. That means we're supposed to enter into an Eden like Adam did. Because we have that glory. Mm -hmm. I want to call upon you to let that glory show up. That's right. Amen. You know, you know 
um, pray and the angel pray and I'll pray for the folks in this um, really listening because okay, we're coming down to the end but there's some health benefits when we fast fasting will cure 99% of functional ailments number one fasting will cure 99% of functional ailments you know when you get a call and your, your mom bring you a plate, a plate of white rice you don't want to eat that you just want to chill and that's why you give you a little soup <laughs> it's easy to digest it will conserve your energy so fasting will cure at least 99 percent of functional ailments fasting gives the the overworked stomach a vacation as well as nearly all other parts of the body you drink some water and you just rest your belly your stomach i mean some of us eat they eat in and eat out fasting gives the overworked stomach a vacation as well as nearly all other parts of our body Fasting conserves energy. Sick people cannot get well unless there is a conservation of energy. Many times food will destroy or waste what little energy a sick individual has. And that's why they pass the fast. And fasting is the greatest curative agency known. Fasting is the greatest curative agency known. Fasting is the quickest curative agency no when you feed a diseased body you feed the disease fasting starves the disease and we want to end on that note about prayer and fasting when you feed a disease when you feed a diseased body you feed the disease fasting starves the disease and brings about healing restoration of your body and yourselves all right and so we're going to end in that. Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? That's the reason why we fast. If the Christian don't fast, what kind of bands will be loose in the land and the nation? I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness. That's Isaiah 58, 6. To undo heavy, heavy burdens upon your life. Stress. Distress. You want to really get stress out your body? Start fasting and praying. You see how quick stress would leave. To undo heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke i believe that everyone before we begin this new year um whether you're running the government some part in the government a commissioner somebody try fasting call me call me at church 774-5400 I, i'll tell you i'll coach you and you will see how you will get god ideas the energy you will get to propel you through is a year we in saint thomas we actually need God ideas, okay? We need God ideas to give us the, the finances and the money and the everything, the way with all that we need. Because everything, to care, take care of everybody, we need money. From the young ones in the cradle to the grave, you need money to take care of your youth, those in between. And then we need the money for the, the Medicare, the Medicaid. We need that money also to take care of our seniors. And so but we need idea how to reproduce money to get tax, to, to give back to our government. Tell them, thank you for taking good care of us. Thank you for watching over us and, and take good care of us. And so, we're going to pray over St. Thomas. Okay, Pastor um, Barrett is here in the studio with me. You're going to pray first, then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to conclude. Father God, we thank you because you're God, and beside you there is none other. And so, God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We believe that your, that your word shall not return unto you void, but it will accomplish where we new send it. And so, God, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak, O oh God, to sickness, disease, infirmity. I speak to lack. And I say in the name of Jesus, because you live, mm -hmm. we can face tomorrow. Yes. Because you live, all fear is gone. Mm -hmm. Because we know you hold the future, then life is worth a living yes. because you live. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Lord, I come against even suicidal spirit. I come against backbiting i come against a, a division in homes i come against divorce and i become man this life the life of christ the life that jesus christ came that we might have and have more abundantly we call it forth into the listeners and we say in the name of jesus we declare abundant life we speak of god even to the one of god who is who has pain, a pain in their, their, their shoulder. Today, Lord God, mm -hmm. as you speak to pain yes. in shoulders, I say in the name of yes. Jesus, amen. sickness, disease, and infirmity, go in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wonderful. That's a wonderful prayer. And I'm in the studio here with my brother today who flew in, just came in uh, uh, just to be with us. 
during this week. Um, Minister Barrett Hazel out of Merrimack Christmaton Center. You're listening to Making a Difference. We're coming down to the close of this particular program here on WSTA and also streaming live to the world. So we bless you. We thank you all our good friends for tuning in and listening to us um, all over the world. Now we'd like you to visit the Covenant Churches. Uh, visit Christian Fellowship Church on tomorrow over in Smith Bay and then a time of prayer and consecration 10 a.m. with Gladstone Pastor Gladstone Hazel and the Minister Barrett Hazel will be there ministering there on, on tomorrow St. John Pentecostal Church they meet at 10 a.m. with Pastor Dennis Estridge over on the island of St. John also Living Word Family Ministries with Pastor Damas Eloy in the new facility is across from the Linquist Beach you have to go there and see it's a beautiful facility well done also, they're still in need of, you know, what they need. They need some help. Okay, so pass by, see Pastor Eloy and say, I'm here to help you. How can I help you? Also, Deeper Life Christian uh, Ministries. We pass the Agnola Martin in the middle at 10 a.m. Also, in the Canton area, Global Life Church. We pass the Oral Hazel. We meet at 9.30 a.m. Also, Agape Total Life Center on Tortola. We pass the Dr. Lucia Woods in the Anderson Estate. They meet at 9 a.m. Bethel Christian Fellowship Church, they meet with uh, Pastor Franklin Connor at 11 a.m. for their morning worship. Uh, they're in the Alcohen um, building along the Weymouth Weimar Highway, they're building number three. Go out and visit these Covenant churches if you're in the area. And also visit Paul and Carol Foodmobile, 5th Street Sugar Estate. There you get your breakfast, their lunch, and your dinner. Call TNT Delight, frozen food drinks from our ground to your table, 998-9283-776-7581. Nightingale Wings, non-medical home care business. If you are incapacitated, you have somebody in your home that is infirm, needing help, call 514-5333. 514-5333. Remember, next week, beginning Tuesday, uh, we have uh, Prophet Gene uh, out of the Ivory Coast, and we even invite our French brothers and sisters to come on out. We just might get him to speak a little French uh, for us. Okay, or the Ivory Coast, they speak French there. And we're going to have um, a prophetic blast, third dimension. It begins Tuesday, uh, January 22nd to the 25th. Our friends all over, so British Virgin Islands, St. John, St. Croix, you can come on over. Rotherboard, come on over. Water Island, you're close by, come on over. St. Thomas, you're right around the corner. Global Life Church, we are along the Weymouth Rhymer Highway. There you'll see the sign. Come visit us. You can also visit us online, www.globallifechurch.org or www.oralhazelministry.org or call us at 340-774-5400. Remember, we are putting a, a chain of fasting and prayer together in St. Thomas, St. John, British Virgin Islands, St. Croix. Uh, we, we're going to do this. And we're going to have somebody fasting and pray every day for our land. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, we're going to see, we're going to hear an answer from God. I said, then you will hear from heaven. Then God will answer from heaven. This generation needs to see an answer from heaven. If you believe it, join in with us. Call us at 774-5400 and say, sign up to be a part of this one day. I'm going to donate one day of my life on earth, my time during 2013 to fast and to pray. For the Virgin Islands, for something to happen, for a refreshing, a reviving, for crime to um, be zero, it's possible. So let's let's keep it going. So God bless you. We love you. We're gonna see you again next week, same time, same place here on Making a Difference, one to two p.m. here on WSDA. God bless you. God bless you.